it's Laura and Ben from Following the Chosen. And between episodes of the show, we wanted to look at some of the comments you guys have been posting on uh, the videos of this podcast because, my goodness, you've clearly been loving it. So thank you so much for that. And it's kind of a uh, something you may not have realised. In Australia, we have not yet seen episode three yet. I know. Ridiculous, right? We uh, were able to see episodes one and two at the cinema. Awesome. But then from there, silence. And yet yep. we're here around the world and including from you in the comments that you've either already seen the episode or the mm-hmm. other ones are very much on their way, which yes. would be great to have here in Australia. <laughs> Thank you very much. And this is not a slight. This is just us letting us you let, letting you know we haven't seen it and we know there's big things coming. So when we're not talking about it, that is why. One comment, though, that we really did love came from Abby Kittle 5058. Is that she her real said, name? I don't know, Abby, tell us. <laughs> but uh, she said that the uh, first episode of season four was her second favourite of the three. First episode, second favourite. Okay, I'm yes. with you. So in this, we see John's story, John the Baptist. It's like woven together through it. And one of the great moments was that scene with John right before he's about to be beheaded. And he looks out the window and he sees a lamb. Oh, yeah, like a dream sequence, effectively. Yeah, or a kind vision. of. And so for Abby, this was like a really special kind of moment. I agree. That was kind of cool. There were a lot of great touches in that episode that were helpfully weaving together John and Jesus. No wonder Abby and everybody else in the comments are starting to notice that, uh, yeah. Laura. Yeah, and thanks to uh, Alexis, famlove3402, uh, who says that uh, <laughs> she watched this one last night, couldn't stop crying. Like, it's a big, it's a very emotional episode, the it first was. one. And we're seeing that a lot, like, whether it's from the following the Chosen conversation that's happening, all of the reactions about the Chosen, everyone seems pretty emotional about this season so far. It was extremely powerful, said Alexis, famlove3402 at the end of that No wonder you couldn't stop crying. It was pretty potent, although we were tearing up more in episode two, which we're about to get onto because your comments, wow, they really lit it up. But before we do, someone else happened to comment about the first episode of Following the Chosen that was about episode one of season four. Yeah, I don't know if you saw this in the comments, but the man himself, Dallas Jenkins, commented uh, that he really loved some of our reflections within this conversation. One of them- How kind is that? Laura, like, really? Yeah. Okay, sure, great. Thanks for dropping by, Dallas Jenkins. Yeah, it's pretty cool taking the time to do this. But uh, Dallas agrees that that uh, conversation we had about how you're watching the show as just characters from the first century and seeing their stories not just as biblical characters but also as people who would have lived in that time, like, that seems to be the real goal of what The Chosen are trying to do and so nailing it. Even though, as he points out, we love encouraging people to read scripture after watching the show. Loves it also that people watch the show because it's anchored in the first century in this world that Jesus inhabited. And yet, as we move on to episode two, now I'm not trying to have a go at Dallas Jenkins. (laughs) Dallas, hear me right. But in your comments, and you can add more comments on the YouTube channel below, Hit us up, let us know in the comments on episode two, Laura. Mm. Many people responding to the scripture basis of episode two. Yeah. Not that they were having a crack at the first world setting, but there was a lot of talk about the scripture basis. But before we get to that. Well, what Dallas mentioned in this one was, uh, I think he was he talking He commented about, again. Which Dallas is, Jenkins. Thank you. Taking the time. Love that. Uh, there was a conversation about the dance scene. Uh, in the original episode and I yes. think the, the you, I don't know if it was you who said that you weren't sure whether it was really that cinematic uh, that was me yes <laughs> well what I did say is that the f- opening shot of the episode 2 was the most cinematic moment in the entire chosen series of yeah. which uh, the creator of the series disagrees with me on that point and pointing out that the King Herod dance scene was very cinematic, of which I don't disagree with no, that, but Dallas maybe, Jenkins. Maybe not as cinematic as the opening of the second one with, you know, Jesus. But we'll see. We'll see what the people think in the comments section. And wanting to highlight as well something that Barbara Lakin2729 said. This goes into some of the real deep themes of what these episodes are about. So in episode two, talking about the 70 by 7 scene, talking about forgiveness, wondering why, this is uh, Barbara's question, she was wondering why they kept, they let this linger between the two characters, between the first three seasons. Oh, yes, you know, between... yeah, between Matthew and Simon Peter and why the right. tension and issues b- between them had lingered on. Yeah, and then to have to wait to see it play out and get to that conclusion, like there's such intention to the writing and the development of where these characters are all going. See, the scripture basis. 
Absolutely. All about the scripture basis. Not trying to rub it in. Dallas Jenkins. Uh, also from Merrim Keldery. I'm definitely not saying that right. Sorry. This is super hard to read the usernames on YouTube. They're, they're fun, sure, but this is Mary McIlderry 519. Do Don't do it. Who Let's knew call that Mary. Mary was just wanting to talk about how fun it is to be chatting about the chosen, to be bouncing back ideas and really getting into, I think this is, I mean, in my words, something the fans love, right? Being able to deliberate, go back and forth about the show. And that's what following the chosen, this podcast, as we follow the chosen, is meant to be all about. We're some yeah. fans. We want to interact with you. And you clearly love talking about the show, as we can see from the comments. Great for Mary to point out that it is fun to bounce these ideas back and forth about this particular show. And really highlighting that there's so much food to, for thought to think about as, uh, you know, you watch The Chosen. Uh, Terrace Reet, 8189. Uh, that was this- pretty smooth, that one. Thank you. I think that one was maybe a little bit better. Yeah. But this was one of the big things in episode two that people were bringing up, that conversation that Jesus has with his disciples. And he sort of points out Peter saying, you know, you are the rock on which I will build my church. For Terrace, he's saying how he, is it a literal interpretation? I've been taught that Jesus didn't mean he would build his church on Peter, the rock, but that his church would be built on the words spoken by Peter, that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So in that respect, it's more about who Jesus is was seen to be by Peter than the fact that it was actually Peter himself who acknowledged who Jesus truly was. And there was a big conversation between you in the comments about this and different takes on this. We mentioned in the following The Chosen episode that we thought it was well handled up on screen that what's said in scripture at this point, what's depicted on screen, they don't try to wade into the different interpretations too much. Instead, Mm. try to put it as sort of straightforward as they can, still anchored in Jesus, the foundation, Mm. but then pointing to Simon Peter as the rock the church will be built on, but then moving on from that point to other things. And yet sometimes in the comments, We didn't move on too fast. There was a lot of discussion about the rock, Peter, and how we read what is on screen as well as what's in scripture. And if you think about it, that's, again, one of the really great strengths of The Chosen. You know, it's it's a brilliant show. It's got brilliant characters. It's beautiful storytelling, all of that sort of thing. But there is this community that continues to be built around this series that can talk about matters of faith, ideas within scripture that you might not necessarily, like I am imagining that a lot of these conversations wouldn't be happening if it weren't for this show in this way. Would we be sitting here chatting about what, you know, Jesus meant with these words? Maybe not, right? But it's like the chosen kind of creates this avenue for people to think more critically about their faith and about, you know, what we really believe in scripture. Including as, I'm going to pronounce this one wrong, Kensi Pick 4169. Let's say Kenzie. But the detail that Kenzie went into to describe the process that they'd gone through of understanding Peter, the rock, church, what that's going to look like. Yeah. Great detail and great explanation in a really um, sensitive and considered way, which you often don't get online. So thank you very much in the comments for when you're sharing your opinion on The Chosen and on the Bible for doing it in a respectful way. Yeah, so thank you so much for being part of the following The Chosen community. We really love having you on board with this. And when episode three comes out, when we watch that, don't worry because we will be absolutely back for more of Following The Chosen, which, Ben, you can subscribe to wherever you listen to your podcast and you can come right back here to be part of the conversation and watch the video versions of these conversations.